Hey guys, welcome to an uncut tutorial. This is for everyone who wants to set up DOS on a real DOS PC and the idea is to go from zero to playing DOS games in a really short amount of time. So I'm just gonna restart the machine. The machine we have has a Pentium MMX processor, 16 gig of RAM and eight gig hard drive. We've got a GoTek floppy emulator. And I'm gonna go into the BIOS first. So I'm gonna show you how I set up my DOS machines and I've put together a few resources on the Phil's Computer Lab website that you can download to make your life a lot easier. So usually I just load the BIOS default and I check that we're booting from the floppy drive. So under the BIOS features setup, we have a boot order here and we're booting from the floppy first and then from the C drive. So let's restart the machine. It should boot from the floppy drive on slot zero, I've got MS-DOS 6.22. Where do you get that from? You get it from the website bootdisk.com. You download the uh, 6.22 image and write it to a USB floppy drive. So if your machine has a three and a half inch standard floppy hard drive, then all you need to get is the external version with the USB port. So this is an external USB floppy and you can use this on your modern PC to put the DOS uh, uh, disk on here and also the uh, MS-DOS starter pack that we will look at later and some other resources. And then you can just transfer files between old and new. Now I'm using the GoTech, so I can't use this obviously. However, the GoTech exists in an external format. So this is the external USB version of the GoTech. So you plug this into your modern computer and just transfer the files through the USB stick. Yeah, easy as. So. We boot into the DOS. The first thing we need to do is partition our hard drive with the F disk utility. So that's gonna load. We have a look, option number four. We're gonna display the partition information. There's nothing here. This is a fresh hard drive. So we go with option number one. We wanna create a new partition, a new primary partition. It's gonna think a little bit. We just acknowledge that prompt and it's asking us to reboot our machine again. So that's the first step, partitioning the hard drive. There are lots of tutorials on how to create multiple partitions. I'm gonna use a single two gig partition. That's fine for most DOS games. If you need more than that, you can create uh, three more two gigabyte partitions. You can also look at MS-DOS 7.1, which can use FAT32, but uh, we're gonna keep it simple here. Two gig is actually plenty and you will be able to run most games. And here we are. Now we've got to format the hard drive. Format is the command. C is the drive and slash S makes it bootable by copying some startup system files, uh, command.com. And that's what we want. We want to boot from the hard drive uh, ultimately. So let's just uh, say yes to that question and off it goes. Now, if you've got a fairly large IDE hard drive, this can take quite a while. On a modern flash um, drive, like an SD card or compact flash card, this will happen a lot faster. Okay, we can give our drive a label. I'm gonna go and call it my time machine. If you have been using a ID to SD or ID to compact flash adapter, and you got the SD card straight out of the box, it usually won't boot. You need to run the fdisk slash MBR command. I've seen this with a ton of drives, otherwise it won't boot. Okay, we should now be able to reboot the machine, but before we do that, we're gonna go to the C drive, create a DOS subdirectory. So MD, make directory, DOS, CD, change directory into DOS. So now we are in the DOS subdirectory. We go back, back to the floppy drive, which is on A, and we copy everything. So asterisk dot asterisk is everything to the C drive. That copies across all the DOS files that are on the floppy onto the hard drive. So very important check disk, for example, we can use that to diagnose our hard drive. EMM386, that's a expansion memory manager, also very important. MEM shows us how much RAM we've got available. That's for the optical drive. Undelete, if you by accident deleted a file, you can undelete it again. High mem is also to do with memory also a very important program. DOS key can be nifty. It remembers the last few commands and you can access them by pressing the up arrow key. Scan disk, 
that scans your hard drive for faults and can uh, fix issues. There's a mouse driver here, but we're going to use a different one. And we're almost done. Now we need the MS-DOS starter pack because now if we re reboot our machine, we just have plain DOS. We don't have a mouse. We don't have uh, EMS uh, memory. We don't have the optical drive working. So on our website, I put together an MS-DOS starter pack. Now on my GoTech, it's on slot 38. So I'm just going to switch over to that. But you can just download it. Run the installer. It will output a bit of a readme file press the key and we can now reboot the machine. I'm going to eject the USB because I wanted to boot from the hard drive. And that was really the hard part. We should now have a nice boot menu where you can select which memory you want. So that should happen right now. So we've got lots of options. If we need a CD-ROM drive, we can use these three options. If you don't need a CD-ROM drive, just go with those. I'm going to choose the first one. And there you go, we've got an optical drive. We should have a working mouse ready to go. That's beautiful. Okay, next step is installing the drivers for the sound card. So I'm using an AW64 Gold on slot 39. I've got the Sound Blaster Basic installation disk. Again, you can get this from philscomputerlab.com, but it's also on the Creative Labs website. So we're gonna run the installer. It's going to take a while, so we, we will uh, fast forward a little bit uh, in this section of the video. Okay, welcome to the audio software installation program. We're going to press uh, enter and here it's telling us we need the Creative Configuration Manager installation disk. Once again, you can download this from the Creative website or philscomputerlab.com. Now that is on slot 42 on my GoTech, so we go to slot 42. And off we go. And that's now done. So it's asking once again to put in the Sound Blaster basic disk, which is on 39, to continue the rest of the installation process. And we're almost done. It's now just going to make a few changes to the startup files. And then we can reboot the machine with F10. So now we're done with the installations. So I'm going to remove the floppy to make sure it boots off the hard drive. And we're just going to make sure that everything is installed, that we have our boot menu. And the reason I put this boot menu together is uh, it should work with any game out there from games like Tarakan 2 that don't like EMS, uh, but need uh, high mem uh, extended memory. Uh, games such as Ultima 7, which need the extended, uh, the conventional memory option, but also games like Wing Commander that like expanded memory. And we can see here the Creative Plug and Play Configuration Manager, the sound card, all the resources, mouse, it's all working fine. Okay, and the last step is how do we put some games onto the machine to play them? So to get games onto your DOS Retro PC, there are lots of options. I'm going to show you one of my favorites. You might have noticed that I'm using a drive bay, so I can just pull out the hard drive. This is a two and a half inch laptop hard drive, and I just put it into a USB caddy, and then I plug this into my modern PC and copy the games across. That works really well. Now, do keep in mind that I produce uh, YouTube videos, and that's why this is a convenient way for me, because I often uh, copy like 20 or 30 games in one hit, maybe for testing a sound card, for example. So the solution works great for me. The other two options are, of course, using the floppy or using the optical drive. So the floppy, that's fairly straightforward. You insert the fir first disk. There's usually an installation menu or something like that. We're going to have a look at installing something onto the CD-ROM. I've got Tomb Raider. This is a uh, copy from GOG that I kind of reversed into uh, an installation disk and let's have a look so with installing games they're usually it's usually a two-step process firstly installing the game which usually copies a few files onto the hard drive and then configuring the sound card and you usually have to do both so let's go over to the optical drive there's an ins installer here install let's run that 
There we go. So, yep, we want to install into Tomb Raider directory. Let's see if it auto detects the sound card. Right, let's go adventuring. That's all working. Continue, save settings. It copies a, files, a few files across. And then you just you also got to figure out where it put the files. In our case, it put it into the Tomb Raider directory. And there's an executable tomb. And off we go. So I don't have any CD-ROM audio music working uh, because on this machine I'm using an external... I've got external outputs for the CD-ROM, so I'm using an external mixer which I haven't configured yet. But yep, that's all working fine. So yeah guys, that's really it. So uh, once you put all the steps in, in, in sequence, it doesn't take long to install uh, DOS at all. Uh, I try to put all the resources together to make it easier for you guys and especially for newcomers uh, that maybe haven't used DOS before and you want to check it out but it might seem a bit daunting or intimidating and it's really not, it's easy and the more people get on board in, uh, with this hobby, the better. So yeah, any questions, please leave them down below, any comments if I skipped anything or if you've got any other burning questions, I will address them in the comment section. And that's really it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.